All right, so I'm going to keep going with free response questions today, but before we do, I'll have a quick review lesson um, to hopefully tie into it, um, which I'll try to do a little bit more of as we keep going forward, get closer and closer to the exam. So we'll be looking at Riemann sums today, um, more specifically trapezoidal Riemann approximations, um, as opposed to left-hand, right-hand midpoint and... Um, and Euler's method. Okay, so here I've got um, y equals x squared over 2 plus x plus 1 from negative 5 to 3. Um, so that's an equation that looks something like this. Um, if I wanted to estimate the integral using Riemann sums, then what would we be what we would be doing is creating a bunch of boxes that we could use to estimate the area. So in this case, I'm going to start with four left endpoint rectangles. Um, so that means rectangles with heights from the left-hand side. So that would look something like this. Okay, so I've got one rectangle here in green, um, another rectangle, another rectangle, another rectangle for four rectangles total. One, two, three, four. And there were eight units that we needed to cover, eight x values, but divided by four, that means each one has a base of two. So here I've got a base of two, a base of two, a base of two, a base of two, with heights from the left-hand side, so that's heights at negative five. Um, so my rectangle would be two times 8.5 for my area, two and 8.5. Um, at negative three, my height of my next rectangle comes into place, so that's 2.5 times my base of two. Um, then at negative 1, a height of 0 0.5 times my base of 2, and at 1, a height of 2.5 times my base of 2. So if I add all of that together, I'll get this. Two by eight point five is seventeen, two by two point five is five, two by point five is one, and two by two point five is five. So if I add all of that together, um I get twenty-eight. Um any questions on what we did for the left hand room and sum? Okay. Um, for the right hand Riemann sum, uh, I still have four right endpoint rectangles that we're looking for. Um, so that means this distance of eight units, I'm still splitting up into two units apiece, so I can get four rectangles out of it, which means my bases are all still two. Base of two, base of two, base of two, base of two, um, with heights that come from the right hand side this time. Um, so that's Um, if I go from the right-hand side, my first rectangle will have a height of 2.5. My second rectangle would have a height of 0.5, then 2.5, then 8.5. Um, here's my rectangle again, from negative 5 to negative 3. If this is a right endpoint rectangle, I'm taking my height from the right side, so the height will be 2.5. Okay, any questions on our setup? Okay, so we multiply all this out. This is 2 by 2.5 is 5, 2 by 0.5 is 1, 2 by 2.5 is 5, and 2 by 8.5 is 17. When we add them all up, we get 28 again. Okay, for a midpoint rec uh, Riemann sum, I would take my heights from the middle. So for our first interval from negative 5 to negative 3, my height would be 5. Then 1, 1, and 5 again for all four rectangles. If I wanted to graph it, it would look like this. Um, so here's my first interval, my two units going from negative 5 to negative 3, and my height is taken from the middle value. Okay, if we add all of that up, that gives us this. So 2 by 5 plus 2 by 1 plus 2 by 1 plus 2 by 5. Um... I actually don't think I copied right here, did I? This should be 2 by 1. 2 by 1, so this would be 2, and this will be 24. Okay, any questions on our midpoint, Raymond Sun? Okay, and the last one. A trapezoidal Riemann sum, so instead of rectangles, we are now using trapezoids, which means instead of picking a side, I'm going to use both sides and then take the average. Um, so for this first, um, this first segment here from negative 5 to negative 3, I'm going to take my heights from both sides. Um, so it'll be both 8.5 and 2.5 will be used. 
Okay, so this will be 8.5 plus 2.5 divided by 2 will give me the average of the heights, and then I multiply by the base of 2. And I'll keep doing that for each segment. So from negative 3 to negative 1, my heights are 2.5 and 0 0.5. 2.5 and 0 0.5, take the average. Um, the next one, 0 0.5 and 2.5. And then 2.5 and 8.5. Okay, which gives us this one. So once I get these averages, um, that's 2 times 11 over 2, 2 times 3 over 2, 2 times 3 over 2, and 2 times 11 over 2. So all of these 2's will cancel. 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. Leaves me with um, 11 by 2 plus 3 by 2, or 22 plus 6 is 28. Um, any questions on what we did here? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, then we'll take a look at today's FRQ. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got a car that's traveling on a straight track from 0 to 60 seconds, the velocity um, in feet per second, and acceleration in feet per second squared are given in the table. Um, we're told that they are both continuous functions, and we've got values at different times for those functions. First thing they want us to do is to estimate um, the meaning, uh, is to estimate the value of the integral from 30 to 60 of the absolute value of vt using a trapezoidal approximation with three subintervals determined by the table. What do I have to do? Let's put it in three terms. Okay, um, so I need to split this into three subintervals. Um, so if I'm going from zero to sixty, and I want to split it up into three different subintervals, what should my subintervals be? Zero to twenty-five, twenty-five to thirty-five, five to sixty. Okay. Zero to twenty-five, twenty-five to thirty-five, thirty-five to sixty for three subintervals that are indicated by the table. Um, okay, I'm not going from 0 to 60 for this one, though. Um, I'm going from 30 to 60. So what should my three subintervals be? There we go. Okay, one, two, three subintervals indicated by the table from 30 to 60. Okay, then we're going to use a trapezoidal approximation to estimate that um, in integral. But I'm not integrating vt, I'm integrating the absolute value of vt. So what needs to change? Uh, if I'm integrating the absolute value of vt, then what should my first trapezoid look like? Thirty times thirty-five divided. Okay, so I need my base of the trapezoid first. Um, my t right now is my input, so that means my t right now is my input for v t and a t. Um, so that means t is my x values. Um, so what's the what's the base of the trapezoid? from 30 to 35? Five. five units, okay. Um, so that's five for my x value times, I need the average of my heights. So what are my two heights? Thirty. So 30 and 35 are my x values. So if I'm looking for heights, I'm looking for y values. Um, my function is vt. 
My function is vt, um, so that means my input is t. If I was going to graph this, this would be t and vt. Okay, so this 5 is where we got the 30 and 35 from. Um, my trapezoid shape that looks like this, oh, actually like this, has a base of 5 and then two heights. What are my heights? Uh, but. Okay, I'm going to try again. So this is 30 and 35, where my x values, my t values. So we said our base was 5, based on the 30 and 35. What are my heights, though? Negative 14 and 10. Okay, they would be negative 14 and negative 10, um, but we're integrating the absolute value of vt. So what should our heights be? So 14 and 10. 14 and 10, okay. Okay, um, what about the next trapezoid? Um, 15 times... 10 divided by 2. Five. Okay, and then the last one? Um, 10 times 10 divided by 2. Awesome. Okay, so my integral from 30 to 60 of the absolute value of vt dt is roughly equal to. Um, so this is 24 divided by 2 is 12 times 5 is 60 plus 15 times uh, 10 is 150 divided by 2 is 75 and 10 by 10 is 100 divided by 2 is 50. Okay, make that 7 a little bit. There, okay, so um, that gives me 125 plus 60 um, is 185. Um, what are my units and what does it mean? Um, seconds? Uh, not seconds. We integrated velocity. So if I integrate velocity, what should I get? So feet. Okay, I should get feet. Um, and I integrated the absolute so value of velocity. Traveled. So is this displacement or is it distance traveled? Is distance traveled. Total distance traveled. Okay, so if I wanted to explain the meaning in a sentence, I could say something like um, the the total distance traveled by the car from t equals 30 to t equals 60. is about 185 feet. Okay. Um, I'm going to do a quick review for our velocity displacement acceleration then. Um, so before I go to part B, um, Scalar, vector, and units. Okay, if I have a scalar quantity, that means there is no direction. Um, so that would be something like distance. Um, if I tell you Oliver walked 13 kilometers today, that doesn't tell you what direction he walked. Um, he might have walked 
six kilometers towards the school and then seven kilometers back. Um, we don't know where he actually walked. Um, but if I use a vector, that would be something like displacement. Um, in this case, um, if Oliver's displacement after walking 13 kilometers is one kilometer, um, that would tell me how far away he is from when we started tracking him. Okay, my distance for both is measured in meters or feet. Um, if I derive it, I'll get speed or velocity. which could be measured in meters per second. I'm just gonna leave this as M, I think. Um, if I derive velocity, I get acceleration, measured in meters per second squared. We don't have a word in English for the scalar of acceleration, so we just call it the magnitude of acceleration. And if I derive that one more time, I'd get jerk. And the magnitude of the jerk. Which is meters per second cubed. Um, anytime that you derive, you'll go down this chart. Um, if you derive in terms of time. Anytime that you integrate in terms of time, you'll go up this chart. Um, if you want to take a vector quantity and move to a scalar, so... Um, if I integrate the absolute value of velocity, I will get distance. So you'll move up diagonally. Um, if I integrate the absolute value of acceleration, I would get speed. Okay, um, any questions on this? Okay. Um, for part B, using appropriate units, I want to explain the meaning of the integral from 0 to 30 of AT in terms of the car's motion and find the exact value. Um, so first, let's integrate. If I integrate from 0 to 30 of AT dt, what will I get? Speed. Okay, um, if I integrate acceleration without the absolute values, I should be able to get to velocity. Um, so this will be our velocity. I'll do upper bound minus lower bound. So it'll be my velocity at 30 minus my velocity at 0. Okay, what was my velocity at 30? Negative 14. Negative 14. And what's our velocity at 0? Negative 20. Okay, so that's negative 14 minus negative 20 is negative 14 plus 20 is 6 meters per second is my um, integral of at dt. Um, if you integrate acceleration, you'll get your change in velocity from your lower bound to your upper bound. So this says um, our velocity increased by 6 meters per second from t equals 0 to t equals 30. Oops, um, feet per second for us. So we're not in metric. By 6 feet per second. from t equals 0 to t equals 30. Okay, any questions on A or B? Okay. Yeah, I have a question because it says V is 0. Why is it minus minus 20, not minus? Uh, so V at oh, 0 okay. was given in the table as yeah. negative 20 feet per second, okay? Okay. Okay, that's right. Any other questions?
Okay. Um, for part C, I want to know if there must be a time when VT equals negative 5, and then justify your answer. Um, so from 0 to 60, um, is there any theorem that would let me know whether um, this y value is possible? Again, please. Um, what theorem could we use to prove that vt could be equal to negative 5 at some point on this interval? Um, the extreme? So extreme value theorem would tell us that there must be a maximum or a minimum. Extreme value theorem. Says as long as we are continuous. then f of x has at least one. Minimum and maximum. Minimum and maximum. Okay, that doesn't help us here, unfortunately. Um, so I'm not looking for a minimum or a maximum. So I'm going to try another theorem. Um, what else do we have? With the... mean value through, but I don't think it's this one. Okay, also not this one, but I'll go ahead and write it. So our mean value theorem says if we are continuous and differentiable, Then there must be some point C on the interval from A to B, where the derivative at C is equal to the average slope between A and B. Okay. Um, so that would be proof that a derivative exists, as long as our average slope is equal to that derivative. Um, which, if we had a displacement function, we might be able to use mean value theorem here, but we don't, unfortunately, so um, we can't use mean value here. I've got one more major formula that we need. Do either of you remember the last one? Really yeah. That's it. Intermediate, which is the one we'll need. Value theorem. Okay, intermediate value theorem says if our function is continuous, um, on A, B, then all Y values between F of A and f of b exist on the interval. Which just means we have to pass through all the y values between our first y value and our second y value. Okay, so looking at our values for v of t, does there have to be a time t when vt is negative 5? Yeah. Yes. Why? City, I mean, like when the time t is 35, right? Uh, 
Okay, you wanted to start here. So at time t35, our velocity is negative 10. And when it's like 50, the velocity is zero. So like between negative 10 and zero. Okay, so by the... Intermediate value theorem. As VT is continuous on our interval from thirty five to fifty, I'm going to have to break out of this to write, I think. on the interval from 35 to 50. Then there must be some value between 35 and 50. Some t on 35 to 50. Vt equals negative five. Okay, um, any questions on this one? No. Okay, then the last one um, for D. Does there have to be a, val a value where A of T equals zero? Yes or no, and why? Like mean value theorem is like B prime of prime of T is equal to is it like uh B of I mean V of B minus V of A. Okay, so V of twenty five minus V of zero in our case. So that will be equal to zero. Okay, so V prime at C equals zero over 25 or zero. Okay, and then V prime is A. Um, so there must be some time between zero and 25 where our acceleration is zero by the mean value theorem. Glad you caught that because I would have missed it. Can we pull up our scoring guides really quick? And we'll double check. Okay, so for the first one, um, we used our trapezoidal approximation and got 185 feet. Can we match there for our second one? Um, we were looking at a change in velocity, um, which is our six feet per second, can we match there? Um, for the third one, we used intermediate value theorem. Okay, refers to intermediate value theorem from 35 to 50. Okay, and then for the last one, uh, yes, and referred to mean value theorem for V. Um, and then units of feet or feet per second for A or B. Okay, which... Okay, we had feet per second and feet, we're good. Cool. All right, thanks Juno. <laughs> um, any other questions on this one? No. All right, um, so I'm gonna stop there. We'll have the rest of the free response questions for um, this year for homework. 
um, which I'll take on Monday at 9 a.m. So we have the rest of the weekend to work on it. And if you've got questions, let me know. Thank you very much, and I'll see you Monday. Yep. Um, so this is the same document as last time. We're just finishing up the other problems. Oh. <laughs> okay. So that's this one. Okay. Have a good weekend. Okay, thank you, you too.